Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is justly judged. Beloved family, our text says, He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we may die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds or stripes, you have been healed. 1 Peter 2, 22-24 Could you imagine the Almighty God clothed in humanity as the Son of Man, King Jesus Christ, who commands the angel armies being falsely accused, insulted and wounded? No deceit was found in his mouth and he committed no sin. He didn't retaliate, exhibiting long-suffering and temperance, fruits of the Spirit. What would you do in that situation? All the power in the world and having to be subjected to insults and ridicule. I know what I would have done. Because you know our God got that fire. Ask Elijah. He burned up 400 false prophets of Baal. And Jesus could have easily called down the fire from heaven and burn up all his accusers and haters who were doing so unjustly. But our Lord is teaching us that even though men may bring accusations and hurl insults at us, we don't need to say a word or retaliate because our Father justly judges our lives. King Jesus tells a story that we should always have faith, be prayerful and persistent when facing situations in life that seem to have us defeated against our adversaries. He tells a parable about this. He says, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come attack me. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And would not God bring about justice for his chosen ones, who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Luke 18, 2-8. So since we serve the righteous judge, we don't have to worry about the charges of the enemy. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen or elected? And this was from the foundation of the world. It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Romans 8, 33-34 And the reason that God judges justly is that it is not my name or your name that he justifies. It's in Christ Jesus' name who intercedes for us. Because until Jesus, every covenant God made with man was imperfect because of man. The covenant with Adam failed. The covenant with Noah failed. The covenant with Israel failed. The covenant with King David failed. As it relates to the imperfection of man, not God. So God, in order to judge justly, had to make a covenant with himself. The covenant with Christ Jesus was a perfect covenant that God made with himself. He says, for my name's sake, I do this. Moses says, what will the people say about you if you destroy these, your people? When God is judging us and we are in Christ Jesus, God is judging justly because he is judging himself. Our family, please let this settle in your spirit today. If we call on the name of Jesus Christ, obey and bow to his name, we will be justified. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Psalms 91, 14 to 15. 
It's not about your name. It's not about my name. It's about the name of Jesus Christ. He is in covenant with God, signed, sealed, and delivered by his blood. Now we can see why John the Revelator wept in Revelation when there was no one to break the judgment seal of God. If there was no one who was worthy, all mankind would have been destroyed. But behold, the lamb that was slain has triumphed and restored the people of God to God. Interesting that the angel didn't say, behold, the lion or the king, because it was the humility, surrender, innocence of the sacrificial lamb that was substituted for our judgment. Can you imagine how elated Barabbas was? He was guilty and on death row. When he heard the crowd chanting, crucify him, crucify him, fear probably gripped him. This was it, he thought. He was about to die for the crimes he had committed. I'm imagining Barabbas fell to his knees and prayed and asked God for forgiveness to take away the guilty charge and his death sentence. And God answered him. He said, Barabbas, today you will not die. Jesus, my only begotten son, will die in your place. Wow! Can you imagine what Barabbas' faith was like after this? His name means Bar Abba, or son of Abba, son of God. That day, Yahweh Elohim substituted his innocent begotten son, Jesus Christ, for his guilty son, Barabbas, who represented all of us. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Because of the blood and sacrifice of the Lamb of God, who is our Lord and King, we have been forgiven, pardoned, and justly judged. Much love.